We need to talk. We need to talk about sex, lust, perfect bodies, masturbation, porn. We even have websites for adultery. We're obsessed with sex, drowning in temptation. Sex is in the open, but our shame must be kept hidden. Because even though we're surrounded by it, nobody wants to talk about it. We need to talk. The church, we're looking like hypocrites because we're often silent or worse, misguided. Sure, I had virginity vows, but that didn't stop me from pornography, which led to promiscuity, and nobody told me that my bondage would follow me into marriage. The outside, churched girl looked good, but behind closed doors, that was a different story. Mo Isom joins me now. Mo, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. You know, as I listen to what you share in that video, you know, so much of anything that's sexual, that's shameful, mm -hmm. stays behind closed doors. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm assuming that's the reason for this. It's the heart of the book. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This, um, I desire deeply to pour out my mess. Yeah. And the power of the redemption that Jesus offers us, no matter what our sexual past looks like, yes. in order to catalyst this conversation. Because there's important things that we need to be, first off, understanding in our own hearts, and then impacting the culture with and speaking truth into. Well, and impacting the church, because the things you're talking about are not just out there in the world somewhere. They're right within the four walls of the church. Yep. Yeah. It's startling. Before we go further with that, talk a little bit about how this started for you. Go back to when you were nine years old. What happened in your life? Yes, I um, was was brought up by you know wonderful God fearing parents who worked to speak truth into me um, in that capacity, but. Um, conversations were kind of incomplete. There was a lot of talk about virginity, but not truly purity. And then at, at nine years old, I came across um, pornography mm. from my dad's, yeah. you know, belongings. And that seared something in me, even just the sight of it. And it became something I didn't run from in shame. I actually had great curiosity about and sought out. And pornography um, became a struggle for me for a decade, which also sort of desensitized me and led into promiscuity and acting things out that I saw and saw as powerful and beautiful and all the things our world sort of declares around sex. So how did Jesus redefine you? Because honestly, you kind of get when we, when we are surrounded by that and then immersed in it and then it it actually gets into us. It changes the our image. We're made in the image and likeness of God, but it changes our image. How did Jesus then re-sculpt your image for you? Yes, sexual sin so dehumanizes us and it dehumanizes others in our sight. It's how we can look at porn and see it as body parts rather than image bearing creations of God. Oh. Um, but what's so amazing is that, that Christ's incredible compassion and mercy, when he intersected my life, I was radically changed, just my, brought from death to life. Um, and my prayer became, okay, God, break my heart for what breaks yours and bind my heart to thee. Give me eyes to see the world as you do. Give me, give me ears to hear the cries of the hurting. And what was so incredible in that simple prayer, and I would challenge everyone watching to pray that, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. Give me eyes to see the world as you do. My vision began to change. I began to see the ways we had taken this beautiful gift he's given us and twisted it and cheapened it and perverted it and worshiped it, really. Um, and I began to see myself as a, a new creation understand whose I was and understand the beautiful ways that he desired to redeem that brokenness and redeem those, those pieces that I had given of myself away and redeem my misunderstandings or my misguidance about sex. It's actually why Jesus came. Yep. yep. You mentioned just a second ago, virginity versus purity. Talk mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. You know, I, I certainly don't want to fault conversations of virginity because it's an important thing. Sure. But when we don't go deeper in understanding what God truly cares most about our heart condition, we lead people towards behavior modification versus heart transformation. And God always cares most passionately about the heart. It is, it is you know, impure actions come out of an impure heart, pure actions from a pure heart. And so 
I understood a lot about virginity, but we're sinners and I wanted to rationalize and I wanted to understand, okay, then what's, what counts? How far is too far? How far can I go? Am I still a virgin? And when I came to know Christ, there was just this reckoning of, of, I don't want a, a works-based answer to a life surrender question. I want all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. And um, I care deeply for the condition of your heart, not just, you know, what symptomatic, Mm-hmm. you know, outpouring what your life looks like. If, if we can allow God to do the heart work in us, virginity becomes a beautiful byproduct. Yes. And living a pure life becomes an outpouring, a byproduct, not the sole rule following focus, but a surrendered life mm-hmm. that, that that is a result of. Yeah. Many of these, these ideas and thoughts and, and um, understandings came to you before you were married. Mm-hmm. You had little little idea that some of the pain of the past would come with you into your marriage. How yes. did that impact you? You know, I think it's it's interesting because we often believe if I stand at the altar and I say I do, my sexual testimony is done. It's all the past. Mm-hmm. And um, what actually happens, I think that the enemy, my sister told me a great quote. She said, prior to marriage, the enemy will do everything he can to drive us together. After marriage, he'll do everything he can to drive us apart. And that means using brokenness from our past, shame, guilt, unrepentant sin, things that we're still carrying, he'll use it to confuse us in marriage. Um, It also means these kind of false expectations that I talk about in the book, Um, these misunderstandings about sex as a whole. He'll use those. Our whole culture saturates people with that, kids with that. Yep. Kids with that. Yes, the culture has a lot to say about sex. In fact, it's the loudest thing we scream about. It's everywhere. And yet there's no great source of that understanding. There's no great source of what we're taught. It's sort of a Pandora's box of, you know, lots of different thoughts and ideas. And when we can come back to the source, the truth, the word of God, we can see that God has a lot to say about sex. In fact, he's the one who invented it. Then why it doesn't the gift. church say more about it? If, if God says it That's and the I'm instruction book is where we're to learn, what yeah. should the church be saying about it? You know, honestly, I think we as the church, the body of believers as a whole, we have got to step up and reclaim sex for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And, and where that begins is we've got to reckon with and wrestle through the, the issues in our own hearts. Yeah. We personally need to understand the fullness of what God says about sex and the incredible power of who Jesus is in light of our sexual mm-hmm. sin. This is the Jesus who sat with the whore at the well and offered her living water. This is the Jesus who saw the adulteress to be stoned and didn't condemn her, but said in response to my great love, go and sin no more. This is the God who uses Rahab the prostitute in the lineage of the the Messiah. And so, so God has a lot to say about redemption there too. We must come to know that healing and wholeness in our heart. And then we have to step past this taboo feeling, this uncomfortable feeling, this shame that we've often been, you know, silenced by. We must be bold and courageous, empowered by the Holy Spirit to boast in our weaknesses so that we can point to the glory of the cross. When we as the church can rise up and say, we're wrestling and struggling with this too, I think it sends an invitation to a world that's an undated by it to say, okay, they're not just the puffed up and prettied people behind those four walls. They're human just like me. And so who is the answer to my human struggles? And and what is truth in light of all of this I'm wrestling with? It's such an important and significant subject in our world today, not just for all of us as grown-ups, but for our children. Yes. Mo's book is called Sex, Jesus, and the Conversations the Church Forgot. It's available wherever books are sold. It's a must read for everyone who's a believer and those who are not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mo, thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Great to have you here. My pleasure.